Glazing literally means to add a shining luster, layer of paint or oil to any surface. It is a technique that can be applied to any artwork, irrespective of the medium that it has been painted in. I will define the area around the eyes and define the shape of the darkest lines. It can change the underlying color without actually obliterating it, producing a subtle film like quality instead of a flat opaque finish. The application of a glaze layer depends entirely on the medium you are using. Look at this portrait done in gauche using the wet on wet process. Gauche by itself loses luminosity and often requires another color to glaze the work overall. Define the shape of the darkest lines for the mouth and below the neck. As a final touch before I begin to glaze the work, I will add a white dot for the glint in his eyes. This produces an effectively varied surface which, if the glaze color is neutral and subdued, enough can often resemble that of an old painting or even a texture from nature. The bark of a tree or a mossy stone wall, for instance, could easily be depicted in this way. I choose not a very transparent layer of color to glaze this portrait. I rather mixed green, yellow and white to get an opaque medium consistency and covered the beard area with the same. Soften the edges of the beard using your fingers. If the glaze is to show up clearly, 
the underlying color must be paler than the glaze itself occasionally a light colored glaze is used over a color which is the same tone or perhaps even dark but in this case the result is always subtle i picked purple to give a wash of the same on the hair and develop his clothes further glazes are often used over thickly impastoid paint and highly textured surfaces the glazing gives a touch of delicate transparent color to an otherwise heavy finish if the glaze is gently white with tissue or rag while the paint is still wet the darkest color will remain in the vices cracks and indented marks the purple used is thin and watery work on the edges of the head and make sure the proportion and shape appears right you may use any kind of brush you like for the purpose of glazing i usually use hog hair though oh, every medium requires a separate brush i mostly pick hog hair i hardly use soft brushes but when working on wet on wet or ala prima may use a combination of hog hair and soft brushes create broad strokes with soft brushes and hog hair to fill or spread the colors adding a barely noticeable sheen to the glazed area rather than actually changing its color The strength of a glaze depends partly on the staining capacity of the particular pigment you are working with and partly on how much water or medium you use to dilute the color. some pigments produce a stronger tint than others for instance phthalo cyanine green makes a bright glaze which will tend to dominate the color underneath a color with low tinting strength such as a raw amber will tone down or modify the underpainting without overpowering it glazing is a process where you can either give a wash of a single color or use different layers of color to beautify your artwork light travels through the glaze and it's reflected back off of the opaque layer below 
This can cause a glowing effect similar to looking at a brightly lit white wall behind a film of color cellophane. The thin oily layers of a glaze can facilitate the rendering of details that would be more difficult with opaque paints. For example, the complex ease of skin tone. When the paint is diluted with acrylic medium, it dries gloss or semi-gloss depending on how to absorb the underneath surface is. Often because paint is too opaque, painters will add special media or a lot of medium to the paint to make them more transparent for the purposes of glazing. A glaze mixed with medium is usually richer in color than one mixed with water. But the dullest or finishes can be enlivened and the color brought up to its full potential by applying a coat of acrylic varnish, gloss medium or acrylic fixative. Let's look at an example of crimson color, the color that you often see in pots and wet clay. In the later case, the important bit to remember is that the first layer must dry completely before you add another layer, more so when using gouache or watercolor. Layers upon layers will produce a luminous mix of color over the paper itself. For example, using yellow over green, the blue will be created on the paper itself and not prepared on the palette. The point being that you must know each color individually and their characteristics or reactions when placed as layers one over the other for the purpose of glazing any work. I have done this around the eyes and forehead. See how I move my hand confidently and yet carefully as I have a lot of practice. Another example is of using crimson over white followed by yellow. The effect is beautiful. We have to mix a lot of water while preparing the colors for glazing the consistency of color must be very thin before you start applying layers of colors. These layers will be enriched when you apply a definite color coat, which is not too light or dark. You may use a thicker consistency of color for this purpose. The moment you apply a dark tone, the purpose of glazing is defeated. Allow this two yellow to dry I will then use a dark shade to shape the facial features. Pick the same ultramarine blue and crimson color we used for glazing and make dark strokes for the eyes. While these media are usually liquids, there are solid and semi-solid media used in the making of paints as well.
if you use water on its own to dilute a color the glaze dries to a dull matte finish it produces a mature luster effect to your work when worked with thin layers of color the quality of your final work will be very different as compared to using thick opaque gouache for an art work i will apply a thin coat of crimson which will darken the color that is below after the first layer dries i will glaze it with another thin layer of crimson important concept of understanding here is that there is a lot of difference in applying watery layers of crimson than to add a dark coat itself in the first round of color application multiple glazes can be superimposed to create complex color variations always work from light to dark gradually building up the tone and color until you arrive at the effect you want to glaze the hair i will give a single watery layer of a deeper shade of color keeping crimson as the base i will mix some ultramarine blue for the purpose now i will wait for the layers to dry before i work further once the layers are completely dry i will add a bright thin chrome yellow to the entire face use lot of water and keep the consistency of the color very thin keep the pressure of the brush soft and move the brush quickly over the face Do not drag the brush as you may lift the layers below and spoil your work. The yellow was help the portrait achieve a definite skin tone. As the yellow dries, you will notice the crimson and other layers peeping through and you will know the contribution of each layer along with crimson in the formation of a skin tone make sure the layers below are completely dry add the same color over the head to form the final strokes defining the hair style you can use the thin color to draw the shoulders let me demonstrate another example of glazing by using white and yellow every painting is an experiment i will use thin white and yellow mix together and glaze the last portrait further to see what are the result observe how i form strokes and move my hand through the face to distribute the color evenly throughout the face this color is adding dimension and depth to the face further it makes the face appear round and dimensional i did not use direct white 
as it would have been too loud. Thus to reduce its chromatic quality, I added a little of yellow. Yellow and white together is also known as body color as it's close to the skin tone of most people. Use your hand and fingers to smudge a stroke if you feel the need. This color can be used as highlights too. So this was a method to glaze your work. I used crimson and then ultramarine blue before finally applying the crimson yellow to get the skin tone. This layer by layer glazing of your work allowed the colors to shine through. You will need to experiment and play with colors to know what they can do for you and how they contribute to your work of art. Let's see what comes out if you glaze your work with these two colors. Try to not repeat the strokes or they won't appear fresh. If you have got a trained head, you may repeat the stroke at the same point or make corrections. However, my suggestion is to avoid doing this initially or else you run the risk of muddying your work. While glazing, you can add dimension by giving direction to your strokes. You can curve the features out through the strokes you create while glazing. I will use red at the edges of the face. It will add perspective or the third dimension to the face. The red on the edges also works to add character to the portrait. Glazing is an art. You need patience and it requires time because every layer has to dry first or else it will appear muddy or dull. So try to be patient and the result will be beautiful. The rules for glazing change while glazing a portrait done using oil paints. In oil painting, the simplest form of a glaze is a thin, oily, transparent layer of paint spread over the top of an opaque passage that has been given some time to dry. Now we have already done a portrait in Ala Prima. As discussed before, Ala Prima is painting done in one sitting. So I will pick this portrait in gauche and I will add a few glazes to this work. I will use crimson and ultramarine which gives us a purple effect and creates dimension in the face. Keep the consistency of the color very thin. Remember the moment you start glazing gauche, the color below might come out as you are using a watery color for glazing. You have to be very careful, keep the brush very soft and do not apply too much pressure. The colors below must not have any feeling that they are being glazed. They should feel no disturbance on the surface. I will add a few dark strokes to the hair and features to create further interest. 
I am using red for the final touches for glazing. A few strokes of this reddish crimson will work as the final garnish on the delicacy. Red creates interest in any artwork, but you need a lot of experience to handle red as it is a difficult color to use.